Hi guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another casual Sunday's discussion. And today we'll discuss about Oricon Media. Why do we use it? Why do we need it? Do we actually really need it? And I actually had a discussion with a viewer some time ago regarding Oricon Media, and she was telling me that she knows somebody who uses wine corks as media, and it's going great. And I actually told her, you know what, media is not important. Or kids really don't care what they grow in. So let's discuss a little bit about why we use orchid media. I will start by saying that the vast majority of orchids we grow are epiphytes, particularly the Phalaenopsis orchid and most of the other orchids you find in the stores. I know I'm repeating myself, but there's always new viewers on my videos. So in case you don't know too much about orchids, well, learn that the vast majority of them are epiphytes. This means they do not grow in soil. In their natural habitat, they grow attached to tree trunks or rocks even, or all sorts of stuff that are not soil actually. So why do we actually use this media? Well, the main reason is to make our life easier. Imagine if all of my orchids were mounted on the walls, I would have to hose them every day. And of course, I cannot hose my walls because the carpets will get wet and I'll have molds and it's really not pretty. So for a normal person who just wants to have a beautiful plant in his home, the most comfortable way to grow them is in a pot with some sort of soil or media. Pretty similar to how we would grow any other type of plant that is designed to be grown in the house, or at least can withstand it. Of course, if we have a greenhouse or we have the capabilities, we can mount orchids, we can attach them to pieces of wood or ceramic slabs and so on, so we can actually keep them hanging. But it's not always comfortable and it's not suited for everybody and for every climate. And this is why the most common way you will see orchids, particularly in the stores, is potted, because they want to make them simple to grow by any normal person who just wants a flower in his home. Luckily, orchids are adapted to this and they can actually grow like this, but they do need a few conditions. First of all, because they're epiphytes, they need a lot of ventilation around the root system. This is why orchid media is usually formed by chunky pieces, whether it's bark or coconut husk or ceramic or leka, whatever, it's kind of chunky. Normally you don't see orchids potted in soil because soil is very fine, it compacts and it can suffocate the roots. Of course you will encounter those poor little orchids potted in some sort of soil, but you'll see they're not doing too great or they will eventually not do too well pretty soon. So most of the times you will see they are potted in chunky media. And this is because being chunky, it has a lot of air pockets inside so the roots can actually breathe. Also, this type of media can retain some moisture. Yeah, they're epiphytes, but it doesn't mean they don't need to drink. All plants need to drink. What's different is the ratio between airflow and moisture. So for example, a normal plant has very fine roots that are adapted to actually live in the soil. This means they do not suffocate so fast, they don't need as much oxygen as an orchid. Also, they are acquainted with the whole nutrient compounds in the soil stuff that orchids don't necessarily like, so it's a whole different story. Orchids are different. So the bottom line is the media we are using provides the perfect balance between airflow and moisture. And also, it is not toxic for the plant, nor does it have excessive nutrients. But why do people use mostly coconut husk, bark chips and sphagnum moss? Well, I cannot really tell you, but I think that in the moment the orchids were started to be grown in a house, there really wasn't enough variety and enough information about them. So, presumably, bark chips is very close to what they would naturally cling to in nature. Also, sphagnum moss might be close to the debris they might find in nature as well. Also, it looks kind of natural and most important of all, it's not toxic for the orchid if prepared in a particular way. However, the secret is that orchids, epiphyte orchids, I'm referring only to them here, can actually be grown in anything you can imagine, as long as it has three qualities. One, it's not toxic. Two, it provides airflow. Three, it provides moisture. Now, the fine balance needs to be tuned somehow, and it will depend on your lifestyle, on your climate, 
on your growing space, the type of orchid you have, and even season. So this is why for some people sphagnum moss is better than bark, because it retains more water, it has different properties. And for other people bark might be better, because it does not retain that much water. It's all about your environment, how humid it is, how hot it is, how cool or, you know, warm and drafty it is. But the truth is, orchids don't really care what they're grown in as long as their needs are fulfilled. And this is why many people start growing orchids in ceramics. And I've started to do this as well. The benefit of ceramic is that it provides airflow, it provides moisture, it's not toxic. But the main benefit of it is that it does not degrade. So practically you can leave an orchid in this media longer than you would leave an orchid in bark bark being an organic starts to decompose after a while. To be quite honest, I prefer something like this. Who likes to repot every one year or two years when you have 150 orchids, right? And regarding the whole wine cork stuff, well of course they can grow in them, it's not toxic, it's chunky so it provides airflow, it does not retain too much water, that's the downside. But if you have an environment which is very humid, maybe not as drafty, maybe not as hot, you have that perfect balance of humidity, it can actually work. While for somebody like me, it might not work because I have very dry hot summers and I actually need a media that provides more moisture. Another thing to keep in mind is your personal preference, what you think looks pretty. Some people might not like the looks of sphagnum moss, while other people might consider it natural. So it's a preference, it's not that it's wrong or right. I for one don't like how wine corks look like. Some of them might even have writings on it. It's not my thing, but it doesn't mean it's not somebody else's thing. With ceramics is the same thing. It has benefits, it has cons, but also there is your personal preference. If you don't like how it looks like, don't use it. Use bark or sphagnum moss. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with any material that is not toxic, provides airflow and provides some moisture as well. And actually its properties work well in your environment. There's one more thing that I would like to add to this discussion. The most comfortable media for you is the best one for the orchid as well. It's a logical assumption. If you are comfortable with the media, if it doesn't make you water more than you have time for and so on, most probably the orchid will benefit from this. If you can keep up with the watering and the care, your orchid will be happy as well. If you try to mount an orchid but you don't have time to water it every day or multiple times a day and your environment is dry, then it's not going to be beneficial for the orchid as well, even though they do grow this way in nature. This is one of the reasons why I don't like to say the best way to grow orchids is this or that. And I really contradict people when they say, no, orchids should not be potted. It's not true. If you don't have the time to care for an orchid which is mounted, don't mount it. It will eventually die on you if you don't water it, so why go through that hassle? If you don't have the time, it's perfectly fine to keep it potted in sphagnum moss or bark or whatever you like best. So when choosing the type of media or the way you grow your orchid, take into consideration your lifestyle and how much time you have to devote to your orchid. And of course, if you like mounted orchids, you can mount them on any wood that is not toxic, any media that doesn't have high amounts of salts like coconut shells, I'm not okay with that. It might contain a high amount of salt and some viewers are not happy with it, but other than that, whatever surface that looks appealing to you, that you can manage with watering, that you will not be upset about if it's ruined, even on your desk, if you want to mount an orchid to your desk, you can mount an orchid to your desk. If you can water it every day or you have a very humid environment, it might actually work as long as the desk, you know, does not have any paints and toxic paints and stuff. But this kind of opens up your mind to some design things. Maybe you like to sculpt a nice thing from wood and actually mount some orchids on it. Why not? It can actually work. Orchids don't care. As long as it's not toxic, it provides humidity, it provides airflow. So these are the three things you need to keep in mind and other than that, just be creative. You don't really need media, but if you want to use media, go ahead. Just know the basics and let your imagination go wild. And this is what I intend to do next year. So I gave you a little glimpse but you'll see what I came up with for next year. I do have some nice ideas for some designs. If you're not sure what type of media to use, just go for something destined for orchids because most probably it's gonna be chunky, it's gonna be a biodegradable light bark or sphagnum moss. Coconut husk I'm not really fond of, but again, it might work, depends on the brand. 
But you know, if you're just a very, very early beginner, go with some bark chips. I think it's the safest media until you get acquainted with orchids and then you can go creative. Why not? Orchids really don't care. So alrighty, thank you for watching. If you like to see more videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a daily basis. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also a share. And also feel free to leave me comments or suggestions for videos in the comment section below. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to orchinature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And if you click on the right side of your screen, you'll watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!